Hello, I'm Sandra Johnson Penny, and I'm here at the Canadian Military Engineers Museum to talk to you about uh, using light color temperature in your exhibits. Uh, lighting is something that we usually don't think about in terms of what color is the light. When we're talking about exhibits, we're usually looking at lux and UV content. But I'm going to look at color temperature because that can have an effect on how your exhibit looks and also how do people relate to that exhibit in that color combination uh, on, a, on a more emotional level. Uh, what I'm not going to talk about is uh, theatrical lighting and that's the lighting that uses color gels to put a very strong tint on colors. Uh, and we're also not going to talk about the effects lighting. So color temperature is uh, something that we, we sometimes wonder, oh, is it really worth looking at that sort of thing? And I would say yes, because if you look at this illustration here, uh, this is two paint colors and the photographs were taken at two different times of day. The one on the top is natural lighting in the evening and the one on the bottom is natural light in the morning and the window was a northeast facing. The two colors are a sort of neutral taupe and a slightly purplish tone. And you can see that the purple is much more visible on the right hand side on the top corner here. And the green is more intense here. You get a better view of what the color relationship really is. Um, if you look across the two corners from top to bottom. Because in the evening, the purple tone looks correct. And in the morning, the taupe tone looks more correct. When that room was first painted, uh, the woman who painted it didn't like how it was looking. Uh, she was under artificial light at night. So the next morning when she came in and took a look at it, she could really see how the color tones had changed. So when you ask the question, when is white white? You're really talking about uh, color balance and that's usually looked at in terms of photography. If you took a perfectly white sheet of paper, paper and placed it under uh, different light sources, how white you think that page is will actually change. The same way if you took white, ivory, cream, light gray, and a pale green tint paper and put those together under different light, how they look together and which one that you thought was more white than the other would actually change. You can see from the pictures here on the uh, left that when you adjust the white balance of a camera, what it's doing is making adjustments for what the lighting condition are and what the uh, recording conditions are. Uh, it was developed when we first started using color film. When you adjust it, uh, you're going to make a, a change in what's the predominant color. Under tungsten light, uh, it's a very yellow light. So the camera will add blue to your exposure to balance out the yellowness of the white. Uh, same way if you're looking at the, uh, the cloudy day or the shade, there's going to be slight adjustments to get the right balance so that all of those aspects are going to look the same as what's on the far right on the, uh, on the image. Now this is an example of color temperature. If you think about the phrases red hot and white hot, you're looking at what I'm talking about for color temperature. So it's the difference between the red flame of a wood fire and the blue flame of a propane torch. The definition that's given for what is color temperature and how it's determined uh, is listed at the um, Olympus, oh sorry, OlympusScienceLife.com. And they say the color temperature model 
is based on the relationship between the temperature of a theoretical standard material called a black body radiator and the energy distributed of its emitted light as the radiator is brought to increasingly higher temperatures. Uh, same way if you heat a piece of clay or a piece of wood, as it gets hotter and hotter, you see the color of that material changing. When you look at light bulbs being marketed in a hardware store, uh, they're often listed with color terms like rosy glow, warm light, daylight, or cool light. Sometimes you'll even see there's a little box with different lights in it and a white background. And that's to show you how that particular light description is going to affect uh, the, the white balance of the room that you're lighting. It is worthwhile uh, even looking at those and taking your color chips. If you're thinking of painting, say, the background of your exhibit, and you know what the light color temperature is going to be, or if you have a color and you want to know how will the light temperature affect it, just stick it into one of those little boxes and, and you'll see that there's going to be changes in how those different lights deal with the, uh, the color you're looking at. So these are the ranges of color temperature. When you're choosing the bulbs for exhibit fixtures, uh, in addition to the electrical considerations and wattage, um, wattage is really what determines how bright the light will be, manufacturers will indicate the light color temperature. Sometimes you have to look into the technical information. Uh, so it might not be on the packaging, although it is usually marked on LEDs in the, uh, the, the ballast of the, of the bulb. So it's usually marked like this on the chart in degrees Kelvin. Uh, if you've ever changed the bulbs in a fixture at home, and even though you chose the same wattage, you might think that the room is dimmer or brighter than the old one because you've changed the color temperature. Even the same description of a color temperature can vary between manufacturers. So you do really have to look at what is the light color temperature. By changing the color temperature, you can make a room seem more cozy uh, if it's a color that's closer to candlelight, so in the lower register of the numbers there. Or if you want it to seem very crisp, you want to look at the, the higher numbers. Although once you get above about 5,000, uh, you're starting to see really see a blue cast to the lighting, and you really have to think, is that something you really want? Generally, a neutral color temperature is best because you get co good color rendering that way. Um, but you also want to think about how is it going to affect how you really feel about the exhibit. Um, there is also an increasing awareness on how blue light can interfere with sleep. Blue light is energizing, while a golden light is more cozy and soothing. Um, but yellow light can also seem sickly if the uh, temperature isn't exactly right. So this is a photograph of the lighting grid in my galleries. And if you look at the, uh, the grid on the left, there are three exhibit areas being lit from those lamps there. And the, the areas aren't visible to each other. So it was really easy for us to use different color temperatures in those areas without the light sort of bleeding over into the other exhibits. In general, uh, our lighting uh, uses lamps between 2,700 degrees Kelvin and 5,000 degrees Kelvin. Uh, with the majority of the lighting being in the middle range using a mix of uh, 3,000, 3,500, and 4,000. And then we also have a couple of bulbs that are 4,100 degrees Kelvin. The two upper ends of the light temperature range are used in area, areas where we really want to emphasize how different the lighting is. So we use 2,700 degrees Kelvin in our tunnel and trench exhibit, where we wanted um, more of a, a gaslight or, or a, 
of tungsten light look to it. Then in the dive exhibit, we used 5,000 K bulb to emphasize the blueness that we wanted to play up in that area. So to, to really see the difference in how lighting can affect color, you can look at uh, a chart like this one. This is the color checker, which is used for uh, getting the idea of normalizing color renderings and photographs. The little chart on the bottom here is what it looked like when I initially scanned the chart on the scanner. And it wasn't really very true. Uh, so I bumped up the saturation and I got the image on the top. And you can really see the range of colors that are used on this. These are all colors that are taken from nature on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, you have a standard uh, rainbow color chart and then a range of pale, pale, very pale tints that are just sort of off whites. On that side of the card, there's also a gray scale. And you can see in that uh, saturated image there that the darker end of the gray scale isn't showing up. This one here that I've outlined in yellow, that one is actually what's closest to the color checker when I actually look at it. So that's going to be our standard model when we're looking at uh, the next images down, down through the screen. You really want to look at how the three blues that run in a diagonal, and those are right here, relate to each other, how these two reds look together, and then look at these three uh, brown, orange, pink colors uh, look, look together when they're under their, their lighting. In some lighting, you're going to find other colors render better or worse depending on the light temperature. So this is one of the first things that people see when they come into my gallery. And we've lit this with a uh, 4,100 degrees uh, color temperature. So it's a little bit bluish. And you can see that the color rendering, uh, according to the chart, is very good. The, the chart on the right-hand side is what was in front of the artifact when I photographed it. And the color rendering was very, very good. Because the lux is a little high in that area, it does watch out the whites. But with the uh, color range in that particular piece, that didn't really affect how you really saw the sculpture. Uh, this is very close to our entry and it's a transitional area where people can let their eyes adjust to the lower light level in our gallery. And also the lighting on either side of it is a little bit more yellow. So it, it uh, does stand out. So this here is uh, one of the first uh, real interpretive exhibits that you see when you come into our, our gallery. And what you see in, in the wood tones on the left uh, is how it would look under an exhibit. And there's a really nice contrast between the, the background wood, which is the mix of sort of yellowish and greenish tinges. Uh, I think a lot of that was originally built with salvaged wood. Uh, to, to mock up sort of uh, the inside of a, of a rough made cabin. But most of the artifacts have a very reddish tone to them, even though it's predominantly a brown uh, exhibit. And if you compare that on the left with the just fluorescent look on the right, uh, you can see that the lighting that we've used is uh, about 3000 K. It, it does play down the greenish look that the, uh, the timber has in that. If you look closely at the chart, um, you can see that the subtle hues on the white uh, that were photographed in the same exhibit don't really show up very well, but they are visible. You, you can see that there is a bit of a variation in these. 
immediately to the right of this one uh, is, is a, an exhibit that's much more blue in tone. And to give you an idea of how the, uh, the, the light changes the color of the background paint, right here in the middle, this, this square is the color, color of the walls. And it's the same through that last photo and this one. So these are the paintings that predominate the, uh, the main wall of the, uh, the second uh, panel exhibit area. And this area is lit, lit with a much more blue color. Um, this one is 4,000 degrees Kelvin. And uh, it really shows how the blue picks up the details. If you look at the, the image on the right of the, the painting, you can't really tell what's in the background on the right hand, the left hand side here. But if you look at the other image, um, even taking into account that there is a hot spot in the middle of that, that photograph, you can see the details of the workers on the left much better, and also of the foliage on the right-hand side. And this is the painting that gave us the idea that we really should think about color temperature. Uh, we had these restored a number of years ago, and there was originally a very heavy layer of dirty uh, shellac. And once the shellac was moved by the conservators, we realized there was much more detail in the paintings than we had originally thought. So once the conservation was complete and we had the, photo, the paintings back in the gallery, we were really inspired to, to make sure that you could see that detail which had been obscured for so many years uh, simply by not being exhibited in the right, uh, right color conditions. So here is our First World War gallery. The little image on the left is what the gallery looks like under our fluorescent maintenance lights. And you can see that the, the sort of khaki color that we used on the, the walls looks a lot more gray, whereas under the exhibit lighting, it, it has much more of that gold and yellow tone. And this also plays well off of the uniforms. The gallery is mostly with, lit with the 3000K lamps. And we chose that very uh, incandescent light feel for this area because it was how electrical lighting was looking at the period. And we also wanted to play up the, the yellows and the khaki in that area. And as you've moved closer to the, the tunnel exhibit that leads out of this gallery, we start to, to build more, more tension with the light. Um, it gets a bit dimmer when you go into the tunnel exhibit and it's much, much more yellow and it kind of evokes the idea of um, sort of the tension between household lighting, the lighting underground in a tunnel. Um, there's vague thoughts of mustard gas. And we did a lot of talk in that gallery when, when we were looking at lighting and colors as to what we really wanted people to think about when they were walking through it. Uh, we use a similar light lighting in the Second World War Gallery, and I'll speak about that in, in, a, in the next slide. Here's the tunnel exhibit. Uh, this one, this side of the exhibit is the trench, and directly opposite it is a, a tunnel. And this area is very brown, very low light. And because it's the only really enclosed exhibit in our area, the very yellow and uh, closed feeling gives it a, a claustrophobic effect without actually being very small and closed. Uh, we wanted to play with the idea of being underground. Uh, the walls of the tunnel side are painted in mottled browns and the woods throughout uh, this area are, are a very clay color. And it really enhanced the closeness feeling uh, that this transitional exhibit gives before you leave that area and head into uh, the next 
the next theme. And again, if you look at the, um, the colors here that were, were taken underneath the, uh, the brighter spot of light in the main picture, you can see there's still very good color rendering. Um, it is playing up the yellows and the greens. You can still differentiate the, the reds easily and the scale of those three blues is still very evident. So this is our combat divers exhibit. And this is where we use the most blue lighting uh, of all of our lighting grid. Uh, we wanted to create a more surreal underwater feel for the viewer. And because the artifacts there are mostly black, we needed a high contrast color and a bit of a higher light level so that you could see the details. Uh, we found that the bluish light does work very nicely with the black. But if you look at um, just around the edges, the next gallery area is painted more brown and the lighting in that area is uh, much more yellowish. It's, it's in the 3,000 to 3,500 uh, degree Kelvin area. So this blue one just really stands out as you're moving closer and closer to it. When you get to it, you're, you find that you have sort of a, a, a relief from the more grayish and uh, dull tones that we've used elsewhere. And this becomes uh, kind of an exciting point as you're about to turn the corner into a different uh, theme area. So these are the color keys exhibited uh, that I used in the exhibit under the different uh, gallery lightings. And you can see in the top left under 2700 uh, degrees Kelvin in the trench exhibit, the really subtle tones on the left hand side of the chart are difficult to tell apart. You're still getting good color rendering, especially in the uh, sort of the peach, golden and brown colors, but it is a bit harder to uh, to, to pull up the more subtle tones. Uh, this picture was taken in the, uh, the more hot spot area of the lighting. So you can see that the, uh, the gray scale is, is quite visible there. Across from it in the Pioneer Tools, the Great War exhibit, and below the Great War exhibit on the Northwest Highway, um, you can see that those middle tones of the 3000K, um, you're getting good light color rendering. You can still see a lot of the, um, the different types of uh, shading in the white. It becomes a little clearer than in the, uh, the smaller ones. And then when you get into the higher levels of uh, color temperature, uh, this one here, the uh, RE and BC paintings, that's that uh, first rather blue gallery that we walked through. Uh, it's really the blue tones and the red that really stand out. And again, this one, this picture was taken in a little bit of a hot spot. So the, uh, the lux is a bit higher. The bottom one is the 5000K for the divers. And that's where you start to see color temperatures start to really in, in a little bit, uh, interfere with your color rendering. Uh, if you compare the, the pink that's uh, on the second row down on the extreme right, if you look at that color specifically in all of the different uh, color, color temperatures, uh, you see it does change a lot. And so does the purple that's diagonally down from it. So your color temperature is going to have a lot of impact on what your gallery looks like in general, and also how easy is it to tell the colors part of the objects you have in there. When we go to this, here we have all of my color chips for the walls. 
So what I did is I took the color chips and photographed them under each of the lighting conditions for each gallery so that you can see how the tones really change. The three that are sort of a, a brown, a pinkish white, and that, that green, those are the ones that really change a lot when you get into the higher blues uh, of lighting condition because it really washes out the, the warm aspect of it and they tend to look rather gray and a little uninspiring. Uh, not all of these colors are used in every gallery. Um, we chose color themes for the time, time periods we were looking at. But if you look at the vertical comparison, where we've taken each color name and extracted the color chip that shows how the lighting affects it, you really do see a big change when you get into um, the Bristol beige. Uh, it really does show best under the incandescent light of about uh, 3000 K. But you don't really notice too much of a change in the lower color temperature or the higher color temperature. There is a big difference, but that one, for some reason, the middle tone of 4,000 degrees Kelvin just made it look bad. It, it, it lost its rosiness, it, it lost its warmth. The, the Millennium Silver here uh, on the other end, uh, that is a bluish gray. And it really plays up the gray aspect if we were to have it under the uh, 2700 uh, color temperature, it, it washes out the blue aspect and you see much more of the gray. But then as the color temperature rises, so does the blue. So the blue light on that gray really accents the blue. The butternut, white oak, and curly willow, uh, those are background colors used in the larger galleries of the First and Second World War, and also when we're looking at uh, modern operations. And there is a color change in all of those, but uh, it's not really enough to make it um, troublesome when you're really thinking about your exhibits. So even though we chose those colors mostly under the, the 3,000 to 4,000 degree temperature range for, for lighting temperatures. We were really pleased with how they, they actually interplayed once the artifacts got in under that light, those lighting colors as well. And the curly willow and the avenue tan especially, they just sort of go into the background. You, you don't really think of them. Uh, same thing with the white oak. It, it's a very, present color, but it just fades into the background so that you're really paying attention to what's in the exhibit cases, the artifacts that are in that area. And it doesn't really make you walk into the room and say, oh, good heavens, what color is that? And why do they have this horrible lighting? It, uh, it all worked together really well. So we were really pleased when we started playing with color temperature, how it came out once all the lighting was in place. And because we are using a fairly high lighting grid and it's fairly broad, there is spillover where you have like higher and lower uh, levels of lux in the gallery. But that does also help to keep the artifacts um, visible. The, the low lighting areas tend to be between where we want people's attention focused. So with the light level, really where you want it in terms of lux, you still can have a lot of play with how something is looking with color temperature. And you don't even have to increase your, your lux to really change how the artifacts are looking under that lighting, whether it's your color rendering, or something like that, the general feel of your art, your gallery. So here are a lot of the resources. A lot of times when you look at white balance and 
light color temperature. The websites are going to hit, hit your search first, are going to be for uh, photography. But if you dig down a little deeper and you start looking at um, lighting design from a commercial point of view, that's where you're going to find a lot more discussion about how does color temperature make a room feel when you go into it. And most contractors, uh, if you can go into their uh, commercial showrooms, their technicians are very aware of color temperature. And it's really worth engaging whoever you can talk to on your supply chain to, to look at what te color temperatures are available for the fixtures that you're using in your, in your galleries and how you can spread those out to create different feelings or to improve the color rendering of your artifacts. So on Wednesday evening, if you have any questions, uh, we can answer those there. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, have a good evening.